It's a new year, 2024 is here, and so is Chrome OS 120, and it's packed with all kinds of cool little features. There's nothing massive or headlining, I don't think, really going on here, but it's a bunch of creature comfort stuff that just makes everyday tasks a little bit simpler, so we wanted to kind of walk you through on video uh, each of these new additions to Chrome OS. All right, so let's just dive right in. The first one we're gonna talk about is the Virtual Desk Shelf Button. Um, it's not a really great name, I don't guess, for a feature, but honestly, you're not gonna be referring to it by its name anyway. And you can see it right now on my screen down there, you see Desk 1. Now, I haven't created any virtual desks, and the first time you reboot, uh, a lot of times, if you don't have any desks open, you just kinda of have your one desk there, that button won't be there until you make some desks. But let me make a couple desks here just for the heck of it, and let me put a couple things in each one real fast. Uh, how about grab it? And how about a squoosh? So there you go. Now you can kind of see the difference between each of the, the three desks. Now, there's all these different ways to get between your desks. I prefer uh, the everything key and then the, the little kind of square brackets that are uh, just above the inner key. Uh, those move you around pretty quick. Um, that's just kind of been my tendency for a while. You can four finger swipe as well if you want between those. But now this new method is this little button down here that as you can see, when I hover it, I get an arrow so I can jump through the desk that way. Uh, but I can also click on this and get a quick, it's almost like an alt tab view of my desks and jump directly to them from there. Uh, and additionally, when I hover them, I can close that desk or I can merge, hover that, combine with desk one. Uh, so you got a couple options there. And it also shows you the keyboard shortcut if you can see that down there. Uh, shift, search, and three to go to desk three. So I'm gonna go to desk one and do that shortcut real quick just to show you. Boom, jump right to desk three. So a myriad of ways to get around your virtual desk, but this is yet another option that's down there, especially if you're navigating with the mouse, it's super handy. And next up we have self share, which is part of nearby share, which is now called quick share as of CES 2024. Clunky naming aside, uh, this is just a quicker way for you to share from your own devices to your own devices. So this won't work, obviously, if I'm trying to share something to Joe's computer, for instance. But if I'm just needing to get a, a file off of my phone to my Chromebook pretty quickly, and it's not a picture that's in my camera roll, because that's part of Phone Hub, uh, if it's something else, a file, a link, anything, um, I can now pull up uh, Nearby Share. I'm, I'm going to call it Nearby Share until I see it all branded as Quick Share, because I don't see Quick Share anywhere just yet. So uh, it's still Nearby Share in my book. But I'm going to pull up on my phone here. Uh, I'm just going to do a picture, because that's the simplest kind of file to get to. Uh, it's a featured image photo I took. Uh, again, I know this would be in the camera roll. I could just do it that way. That's how I would do it uh, if I was doing this. But to show you here, I'm going to hit Share. And then I'm going to click Nearby Share. And you can see my Chromebook has shown up right up here. When I click it, now you can watch the screen on the Chromebook. As soon as I click it, instead of the Chromebook saying, uh, someone's try trying to share something with you. Do you want to accept this share? You can see, boom, it just popped in, shared it, and took it. Because it's it's me sharing to me. So there's no need to be like, oh, do you sure you want this thing? Well, it, I was the one that shared it. Of course I want it. Like, it just takes one more step out of the whole process. It doesn't do anything different. It's not like it's sharing it in some new way. There's new tech going on. It just takes out one of the steps that you used to have to do to go click and accept the actual nearby share. Next up, we want to talk about uh, a new feature that is in the App Manager. So a lot of you may not jump into this section of the Chrome OS settings very often. Uh, but if you go to your settings, um, you go to your apps section here, and then go up to Manage Apps. I'm just gonna pick, we'll do a couple of these. So um, I know for sure, Chrome Dev, I know that's an Android app. Uh, so if I click on it now at the very bottom down here, let me maximize this a little bit. At the very bottom down here, uh, you see app details and it tells you it is an Android app. It's from the Google Play Store and there's a link right here. I can click it and, and go to uh, where you would download or update that app uh, in the Play Store. It tells me the app size all that kind of stuff, what version it's on. So it's nice to be able to see, sometimes if you're curious, like where did I get that app or how did this thing get on here? Uh, now you can go to your app settings to see that stuff. So let me pull one up. Uh, Chrome Canvas, for instance, uh, is a web app. Web app, there you go, pre-installed on your Chromebook. Um, tells you the storage and all that kind of stuff. Let me go to a web app that I installed. Web app installed from the Chrome browser. So it's like very specific, it's kind of cool. It tells you like, I'm the one, I installed that, I clicked it in the Chrome browser. It didn't come from the Play Store. So let me find, I think yeah, YouTube Music should show. 
Yeah, perfect. It's a web app installed from the Google Play Store. Again, I click the Google Play Store. It's going to take me to the web app version, YouTube Music for Chromebook. Um, so it's, it's just one of those little helpful things that if you need to know where an app came from, how you installed it, or what it's doing on your Chromebook, you can go right here and see all those details. Next up are some new settings you've got to customize your keyboard. And Chrome OS has slowly but surely gotten better at allowing you to kind of manipulate what you want to do with these keyboard keys, but Chrome OS 120 takes that a little farther. So in your settings, again, if you go under device, go under keyboard, and then custom keyboard keys, you can see in here, even for like big keys, so we're talking like search, shift, control, alt, ones that honestly I don't know that you should change, um, you can actually change these things. And so I can change what I want my control key to be. Um, I'm, I'm not completely sure why you'd want to do that. Um, the, the search key, I maybe understand that you would maybe want to make that the assistant or something, but I, I, these are main keys. I don't, it's like, it's like saying, do you want to change your up arrow? No, I don't, I don't want to do that. So, uh, but you can, if you want to, the cooler part is down here at the bottom. So you've got some of these shortcuts where Google has changed some of these things over the years. So specifically like for me, I'm just forcing myself to relearn it because I'm like, hey, if this is the shortcut, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna remap my brain. I'm about four days into it, it's still not taking. I, I've hit Alt backspace at least 150 times today. Uh, it's gonna take me the full three weeks to retrain that habit. I guarantee this. But if I didn't want to relearn it, if I didn't want to mess with that, I could go back and change that to Alt backspace and just stick with my habit. Um, but I like to learn new stuff, so. Um, I'm actually going to go and, and leave it at uh, launcher and backspace because that's the new shortcut and I'm going to stick with it. But, you know, for stuff like page up, page down and home insert, if there's a different shortcut that would be better for your workflow, you can just change it now. And the F11 and F12 keys, which I almost would have to count on here. I would say, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't have those keys. So, you know, if you have a Chromebook, it's got some extra function keys. My F11 key is the power key. I don't think it's going to let me remap that one, but uh, they're disabled right now, but it would let me actually change those uh, to a couple different shortcuts as well. So nice, nice addition here to help you just uh, make the most of your Chromebook keyboard. And in a similar vein to this, uh, this is a kind of smaller change uh, that I would kind of put with keyboard shortcuts. It's not specifically a keyboard shortcut, but uh, if we go back to device and now we go to touchpad, you can see right here, use touchpad and keyboard to right click. It's one of those things that I remember seeing in the repositories like a year and a half ago or something like that uh, and thinking like, that's a good idea. So now uh, if I use the touchpad, right now I've got it set to launcher and click. So here's a two finger click on the screen. It brings up my right click menu. Uh, but if I hold launcher and just one finger click, it also does that. Now I could change that to alt if I wanted to. But I like the launcher, they call it, they tried to call it the everything key. I don't know if ever, anybody ever calls it that. I like it as the everything key. It, it could be like the key that helps you do all kinds of other stuff. But uh, regardless, I like to kind of use it and now that I'm going to start using it for backspace uh, or uh, for delete. I'm going to start using it for launcher and click when I, when I remember that that's an option. Again, for me, I've become really accustomed to two finger clicking for a right, uh, right click menu. So that's probably what I'm going to stick to, but here's another option. All right, a couple more and they are, to me, these are bigger, probably more useful uh, than most of the other small features that we've talked about so far. And the first one is the new media controls. And so to get uh, those media controls, we definitely need to get into uh, our flags. So I'm going to have you go to Chrome colon forward slash forward slash flags. And you can see I've got a few turned on here. So global media controls is what you're going to want to look for. Let me blow this up a little bit so it's easier for you to see. Global media control start stop from cast and then uh, global media control updated UI. Those are the important ones. And for now, uh, I forgot to mention this earlier, the nearby sh sharing self share uh, is behind a flag. It was like a big announcement part of 120 uh, in the Chrome OS community. So uh, I, I would assume that's just going to start working without this flag having to be turned on or, or you know, they'll do a server side thing or something. But for now, I couldn't get it to work without turning that flag or forcing that flag to be enabled. Uh, they can force those flags to be enabled by default. So the default setting might start working. It, it might be working right now as you're watching this video. But uh, for now, I did have to turn that one on. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, we'll go ahead and talk about the other one, enable peripheral customization. Um, that one is going to be with the, the next thing I'm going to show you. Uh, but for right now, for the global media controls, you need these two turned on to see uh, what it is I'm about to show you. And that is 
the new global media controls. So let me start uh, YouTube Music. I just got to start a, a track here for it to... Don't want to get uh, flagged here, so I'm not going to play that. Uh, but once you start some music playback, your global media controls show up at the bottom. But now they look like this, which looks much more inline and cohesive with what we expect to see with Material U. So you can see it's got the same highlights as my other stuff. Uh, it's taking all the Material U design. And I, let me see if I turn this down. There we go. I'll just mute that. I can play it. Uh, you get the new uh, squiggly line player. Let me slide this out. A little squiggly line player that we see in Android. So it's, it's a nice... Uh, a nice look. You can obviously cast from these as well, but what I really like, especially when I'm like on a dual monitor and there's like a lot going on, if I cast from any particular uh, page or app or anything like that, when I hit that cast button, instead of it bringing up that old looking white box, it now brings up this really awesome looking part of the media hub, uh, our global media controls, and gives me all my casting options down here. And I can obviously click that and, and begin my cast session. Uh, but I really love the way this looks. It looks cohesive with the rest of the shelf. It makes sense with the rest of Chrome OS and it just, uh, and it's, it's been working really well too. Like I'm not having as many issues with that cast menu kind of like disappearing or not working. So uh, I've really loved this. It's been around, you know, I've been in beta for a little bit in 120. So I've had this for a little while and I've gotten used to it. And so when I first got into 120, it didn't have that before that flag was turned on or those two flags were turned on. I was like, oh, I got I to gotta fix this. This looks too good. I don't want to go back. So a uh, really cool addition here with the global media controls. And finally, but definitely, uh, what's, the, what's the term? Fi no, last but not least. Can I come up with something finally, but not uh, flailing is coming to, t I don't know. <laughs> finally, uh, but not least, that's it. Um, we've got the, we did a whole video on this. So I'm not going to go too far into depth here, but uh, the ability to customize your mouse buttons, which I just love this so much. Um, uh, the flag we talked about before has to be turned on still. Uh, hopefully like that and the media controls, like some of these things need to come out from behind flags. They're good. They're awesome. Everyone needs to have them. They just need to be a part of the Chrome OS experience. But uh, we're going to go into back to device, mouse, and now you will see this is the MX Master 3. No, it's not. I lied. It is the uh, MX Anywhere 3. Uh, I can go down here to customize mouse buttons. I click it. I don't have any selected yet. I've gotten really used to having, so I've got two buttons here. Uh, that back button, I like that. That's a habit. I've had other other mice uh, use a back button like that. I, that is a habit. I'm not changing that. But the front one I never use. So I'm going to click it. Boom. You see it pop up on there and I'm going to tell it to do uh, dictation. That's been really cool uh, for this video. Actually, that's that's what I've been using. And by the way, if you choose to do that, you do. You still got to turn dictation on. Uh, I had somebody comment like, well, it didn't work until I turned it on. Well, yeah, we've got to make sure dictation is actually on. So we'll go. Uh, we'll just go and search dictation. Make sure that it's on. It is. Uh, sometimes you got to turn it off and on for it to work again. There we go. We're good to go. So let's, uh, I don't know. Hello, YouTube. Super handy. It's just really nice to be able to click a button and just talk to your Chromebook. It's really nice. Uh, it's even better. Uh, I don't think I've got assistant turned on here. What I've really enjoyed. Uh, make sure my assistant's turned on. Sure, why not? Do not want hey on. Good, good, good. Um, so now um, I can go in here. I don't have to go there. I'm sorry, I can do the shortcut dictation. What's the weather like today? And yes, I know I can go up there and click the microphone, but it's just nice to just have a button to click and, and be able to speak, uh, do search terms. There's sometimes like I got a whole sentence in my head and it's faster for me to say it instead of type it. I, I love it. Uh, but you know, you can set it to overview, which is kind of nice and kind of helpful too. But the main point here is you can really customize your mouse to fit you. And if you got one of those crazy mice that has like 20 buttons all over it, if you want to learn them all and create new habits, you can, you can set them to all do whatever you want. You can even do key combos with it too. So uh, if there's a, a key combination that you like and you want to map that to that button, you're free to do so there too. But again, we did a whole video kind of outlining all the possibilities with this. We'll, we'll link that down in the description uh, as well. But yeah, uh, really, really big update. Um, it's, it's hidden and not something that's in your face, but 
just a fantastic um, uh, user-facing thing, I think, that can help people get a lot more productive uh, with their Chromebooks. But before we go, one more thing. I actually came across not too long before uh, we're filming this video. Uh, it's a feature that I came across in December, and I was like, I wonder if it made it down to stable with 120, and it did. It's behind a flag. Uh, you have to go to Enable Faster Split Screen Setup. Um, you can see it here on the screen, but I'm gonna enable that and restart. And what this allows is when you go into your over, or when you go into a window snap, uh, however you wanna do that, whether you wanna drag uh, the window to one side or the other, you know, there's all these different ways, right? So there's, you can, you can drag it to one side, drag it to another. You can use the, uh, the resize button up at the top and do all these different splits, all that kind of stuff. The point is what it does, let me open up some other random stuff here. Um, there's the files and we'll do a squish window. What this does is when I go to split screen in any way, shape or form, instead of just sitting there, the rest of the windows organize themselves in the overview mode. And so they're ready for you to go, oh, I wanted this, boom. I wanted those two things next to each other. It's stealing a bit from uh, not just Chrome OS's tablet UI, but like, like Android and iPad and all those kind of do this on tablets. It's like, well, if you want a split screen, clearly you're wanting something else over here. You just don't want blank screen. I'd say 99 times out of, 10, uh, out of 100, that's what you want. This, uh, this feature allows that. It's super cool. It's another one that I started using, I don't know, a month ago or so. And I just, I've gotten used to it being there. So I've got to stay on a version of Chrome OS and turn on some flags in order to keep it because I really, really like using it on a daily basis. For real this time though, that's it uh, for Chrome OS 120. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up, head down there, hit that subscribe button and be sure to ring the notification icon as well if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Till next time, we'll see you.